Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to another rad video where in this video I'm going to be teaching you or giving you a few tips on going bikepacking. Now if you haven't done bikepacking before and you really want to get into it, you might learn a few tips from this video. But if you are an experienced bikepacker and you've done it a lot, let us know in the comments down below and also help the community get a few more tips that they wouldn't have got from this video. So let's crack on with the first one. Right, this first one is about the bike. Now, no matter what bike you have, the bike that you've only got is the best bike to go bike packing with. Now, you can do it on a number of different bikes, bikes specifically built for bike packing, where um, if, you've got the, if you've got the extra cash, you can go and do that. But for me, I've ridden a few bikes. I've ridden a fat bike. I've ridden a hardtail a number of times, and I've ridden a full-blown cross-country bike with panniers, and I've done it on a all-mountain trail slash, I would say it's a trail bike for sure, short travel bike. Now, like I said, any bike is the best bike for you to go bikepacking. If you only own one bike, that's gonna be the best bike to go bikepacking on. Packing light, or just packing the essential things that you need to go bikepacking. Now, I've done this a fair bit, and I've, um, I've overpacked a lot of times. Now, I'm not a full-blown, super experienced bikepacking expert, but I have done it a few times and I have made a few mistakes and I've learned from them. Now, packing light is key when it comes to going bikepacking. You only need the essential things, like one set of clothing, um, definitely a few things that you're gonna need, like cooking if you're going overnight, certain things like that, lightweight things that you can cook with, um, good warm jacket, a few things that you, are gonna take into account like the weather that's gonna be you know, quite bad, which I touch on in a minute. But I've traveled around with panniers, I've traveled with these Topeak specific bike packing kit where you can get a mid-loader pack, but you know, that's good for the hardtail, which I've had. And it was, it was cool having it because you can put all your essential things that you need to get to quick and easy with that mid-loader. Now the front loader, this is basically for carrying my tent. So my tent goes in there, which I'll show you in a minute. But the tent goes there, and then this is where the, um, the bits and bobs, the bulky things that I need to carry, like the cooking stuff, uh, a jacket, my sleeping bag, my roll mat can go in there. You can get super lightweight roll mats. That's in there. I've got my set of clothing, like I've said, all in there, and a few bits and bobs. Now, you can carry a backpack as well, but if you're going on a super long journey, you don't want to carry such a big pack backpack because it's going to put a lot of weight on your body where you really would want it on your bike than on your person. So carrying the essential things is pretty key. Now I've carried a lot of things in pannier bags because I had a lot of space and I only went for one night. Look at this. It just makes the bike heavy. You don't particularly want to be taking every single thing and the kitchen sink because just lugging all that extra weight along for I don't know how many days you're going for, even for one night, it is it's gonna drain you. Sharing stuff between friends is key. You can distribute the weight so you're not lugging it all over the place on your own. You got friends to do it. But even if it's just like camping equipment, like pots or pans, like cooking equipment, you can share it between the two of them. So Blake, can you take my bag, please. Yep. I'm gonna put it just over here. Yeah, I'll take that for you. Thanks, oh, Blake. Yeah. Thank you. Because sharing is cameras. caring, distributing the weight is gonna help everyone. And you can take more stuff then. So this next one is maintaining your bike. Giving your bike a once over before you go out on an epic adventure. Because the last thing you want to do is have your bike have a mechanical failure super far away from your car if you've driven somewhere, or home, or hotel, or somewhere so remote where Neil and Cy Richardson went in Iceland. If you're out there in the unknown and something goes wrong with your bike, why, well, it's gonna be an absolute mission to get back to civilization if you've gone far or it'll just ruin your trip. So make sure you just give your bike a nice once over, a clean, even if it's just, even if your bike is running in tip top condition, just give it another nice once over. Maybe change the sealant if you feel like you haven't done it before, if you're running tubeless. Maybe uh, change a few gear cables if they're a little bit worn. Give it a good old lube. Grease your headset. Grease your bottom bracket, oil your chain. You don't want your pride and joy and your transport to break down on you. When you're going on a very long trip, 
it's all about taking spare parts. Now, there's a fine balance between taking too much, like a spare derailleur, to a spare chain, to lever blades, everything like that. But that all weight, all that weight takes into consideration when you're going on a long journey. So taking the essentials is key, like brake pads. I do take a pair of brake pads depending on how long I'm going for. And if it's super rough and steep, I do take some brake pads with me. I tuck them away. I take it out of the packaging and just take the pads in a little plastic bag or wrap them up in tin foil so they don't get too contaminated. Um, chain, you, I haven't taken a chain, but when you're going super long distance, you don't really want to snap your chain and don't have a chain. Well, you can just fix it and, you know, minus a link and have a another quick link, which I do have taped on my bars when I go out there. So I have a spare quick link to hand if my chain were to snap. Now, if you were worried about your chain, you would change it before you go. So you'd have a fresh one on there and everything's in good working order. But there's a fine balance between taking too much and too little. Just take the essentials, brake pads, um, quick links for your chain, uh, tools as essential and plugs if you're running tubeless. And if you are running tubed, I've got a, um, a spare tube here on a strap that I strapped to the bike, um, even though I'm running tubeless, but if I slice a tire, I can just cover that slice up and then bung in an inner tube and I should be good to go. Now I do take two inner tubes with me because I got two tires. You got to get yourself a few cable ties because you never know if you fall off and you rip your bag, like your panniers or your dry bags or whatever, Cable ties are gonna help that. Also, if something goes wrong on your bike, you snap a lever, you can actually tie this all up. You can make sure you can get home safely. So, bunging a few cable ties into your bags or onto your bike, like zip tie them or even tape them to your bike is gonna help you out. These little guys are pretty key. Also, talk about tape. Taking a little roll of insulation tape or a little bit of duct tape is gonna help you as well. That's another key spare thing that you can take with you on a long journey. Planning is essential when it comes to bike packing because if you don't have a plan or a route or route, you don't know where you're going, you're gonna end in a bit of a, well, it's not gonna be going very well for you. So planning is key when it comes to bike packing or bike touring and such. Pl plotting your route, on a map and seeing where you want to go is cool because you know where your destination is going to be, you know where your campsites are going to be, you know where your hotel, if you're going to stay in or an Airbnb or whatever, you know where you're going to be staying. Now us on GMBN, we are partnered up with Komoot. Now Komoot is a pretty good uh, website that you can basically plot out and plan your route day by day with a schedule, with stops where you can fill up with water, food, uh, campsites, it gives you recommendations and it breaks down your route as well. So if you have a multi-day or if you have a big whole route planned ahead of you, like 200 miles, you can break that down into three days. You can break that down into two days if you want to have two massive days, but if you can, it just breaks it all down. Now on here, you just plan your route. It's all about planning. Put in destinations where you want to go, what type of riding you want to do, mountain biking, obviously, but you can do lots of other things. Plan your route, scope it out, and if you're not, if you're too worried on how much elevation you're going to be gaining, then you can, you know, go with other different ways to make your climbs a little bit easier and all that jazz. But planning your route is key. Now, also the next thing is take into consideration weather, which again, Komoot can help you do that as well. But weather is a big key when it comes to going on adventures because when you go out there, you are introduced with the unexpected person, well, the, the, just the weather. So going fully prepared with the right equipment, in, again, take into consideration planning, uh, the weather, and worst case scenarios, if something were to go wrong, you can get yourself out of it. One of the most important things is when you go bike packing, never go without lights. Because if you don't go, if you go out there with no lights, you can you can definitely underestimate your trip plan. The weather can close in. Uh, you can be stranded out there for a little bit longer because you get lost and you start to ride in the dark. Now riding in the dark with no lights is dangerous. It's not clever. So. 
I do pack some lights in my backpack, wherever in my bags. So if I'm late to a campsite or if I'm late to anywhere that I've planned to be, then these will come in to save you. Right, this next one, this next one is, does everything fit on your bike? Everything that you've got, does it mount to your bike properly? And give it a test run before going out there and experiencing something that you've just bought and you don't know how it works and you've left something at home or it comes back, well, you've just got it and it's broken or something. So before you go out, make sure you can set it all up, see how it all works, make it a little bit easier for you when you get out there into the, into the field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how my tent sets up, see how my mat works, put my bags on, get them adjusted perfectly, see how they work and fine tune them and all that jazz. Because you don't want to do it on the day you leave, which I've done before. And uh, you, be, you get called a faffa and you don't want to be called a faffa. A little tip, when you pack in bags, just like these ones, because there's different brands out there that look the same, I would put all your heavy goods right near your seat post because if you have all the weight right at the back and the tail, well, it's just gonna be flopping and bend down and probably catch the tire, which has happened to me. If you're new to the tent game, just make sure you know how to set it up and you've got all your pegs, you've got all your guide ropes. If you've used it before, and that's another thing, if you've used these all before, make sure you've got everything before you go back out there. Even if you're an experienced bike packer, you could have lost something on the last trip you went on. Oh wow, that peg has seen better days. That was some hard ground that went in. Ugh. So that's something I've got to fix that I forgot about. I'll fix that. So it's key to uh, set up your rig, see if it, everything is there, and if it all fits on your bike, if you've just bought some new bags or you got a new bike or a different bike to put bags on, you make sure that it all fits on your bike nice and snug and it's not gonna have an issue when you're trundling down the trail. Happy with that. Now, the best thing is to make sure that you're nice and warm when it comes to out there at night. Cold, you don't wanna be cold, it's just uncomfortable. You wanna have a good sleeping bag that it can take up to a certain amount of temperature depending on where you're riding. Uh, in the summer months, I go with a super lightweight one. It's really small, it's compact, and it can go down to 10 degrees, maybe six, when it's a little bit comfortable. Uh, keeping dry as well when you're out there. You wanna make sure you go to bed nice and dry because uh, that keeps you warm and it keeps the morale and your spirits up. Now, a good ground mat as well. You don't just wanna go and sleep on the floor, even though some people do, uh, but doing multiple days like that can be quite hard and uncomfortable. And when you've had a big day on the bike, you don't really wanna go and sleep on the floor. So having a good ground mat is gonna be nice and comfortable for that. There you go, a few tips for you to go out there and experience your first bike packing trip, or if you've been doing it for ages, maybe some of these tips have helped you out. Let us know in the comments down below. And uh, let us know if you're gonna go bike packing for the very first time, because I highly recommend doing it, because you go out there and you explore where you live, you can go as far as your field and ride certain trails that you haven't even ridden before and you didn't even know about. But remember, it's planning, don't take weather for granted. Make sure you take that into consideration. Consequences, see if you can get out tools and spares and kit. Just remember, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just badly prepared. Hopefully this has helped you out. And I'm gonna leave you a montage of bike packing trips that we've done on GMBN. If you wanna go watch them, we'll put all the links in the description down below and I'll see you at the next one. See ya.